Hello students. I hope by now that you all have had the opportunity to read the preliminary essay in John Stott's Message to the Romans. He brings out some very important facts, including the tremendous influence that Paul's letter to the Romans has had upon so many lives. And why is that? Well, let's consider this. First of all, in Paul's letter to the church at Corinth, he makes mentions of the impact that his letters had upon the believers there in the early church. They described his letters as weighty and powerful. They were weighty and powerful in the way that they impacted the church, the believers there at Corinth. We know this because of the way they responded, especially to his first letter that he wrote in order to address some issues, some things, to correct some faults that were in that church. And they received that letter, recognizing Paul's authority as an apostle and as a spiritual father to encourage them and instruct them in those things. The word weighty means impressive, and the word powerful carries the meaning of strong, mighty, forceful in the context in which it is used. And those words can aptly be applied likewise to Paul's letter to the Romans, because it is truly an impressive letter. It is a letter that carries weight. It is a powerful, forceful letter. And this is the reason that the letter has influenced so many lives, as John Stott points out in his essay, including famous people like Augustine, Martin Luther, John Wesley, and Karl Barth, to name a few. I'd like to add my name to that list as well because of the tremendous impact that Paul's letter to the Romans has had upon my own life. I would not be the man of God I am today and be where I am in learning to, to grow in the faith and knowledge of Jesus Christ without my knowledge of the, the letter to the Romans. Let us consider, though, why it is, what it is that makes this letter so powerful. And I'd like to point out three things that we find in Paul's opening words in chapter 1, verses 1 to 17. There are three things. The first is the fact that it was Paul, the apostle, who authored it. It's because of who Paul is and his role as an apostle of Jesus Christ. As Paul, Christ's anointed apostle, he was sent out to preach the gospel to all the world. But not only that, he was given a revelation of the gospel to cause him to understand the meaning of Christ's death upon the cross. And it is because of his place, along with the other apostles who likewise received a direct re revelation from Jesus Christ himself concerning the meaning of his death and resurrection, that causes us to give the apostles, at least we should, a high regard in our minds and our hearts because of their unique role. It is Paul's role as an apostle that gives credibility also to his letter in Rome, for us to not only regard it and esteem it uh, with a, a great appreciation, but to take heed to its contents. The second reason that makes this letter such a powerful influence is because of who it was meant for. It was addressed originally to the believers at Rome but it was intended 
for every believer, every church, in every place, in every generation. We know this because of its place in the canon of Scripture alongside the other books of the Bible and letters. But there's something else, too, is that it is personal because it is addressed to the saints. It makes it a personal message. It's not a narrative or like we find in the four Gospels or the Old Testament books, but it's a personal letter that we can take as it being written from the very heart of God to our hearts, dealing with heart issues. The Apostle John in his last letter called Revelation wrote to the seven churches and in each one of those seven messages we find the words he that has an ear let him hear what the Spirit is saying to the churches and I believe that applies not only to John's message to the seven churches of Asia but to all the messages that were sent to all of the churches including this one here written to the church at Rome and now the third reason that makes the letter to the Romans so powerful, so impressive, is because of the nature of its contents, the subject and substance of its contents, which is the gospel of Jesus Christ as God's power to save all who believe. It's one thing to know that Jesus Christ is the Son of God, to believe that and that he died on the cross, and rose again the third day but it's another thing to understand why he died and rose again and this is what this letter unfolds to us and explains like no other letter of the New Testament does it's relevant to our needs it serves then to establish us in the fullness of the gospel so that we also might be conformed to the image of Jesus Christ. I'd like to point out one more thing, and that is this, that not only did this letter impact the lives of people like Martin Luther and John Wesley, but then they in turn were able to impact the lives of thousands of others because they took this letter to heart and put their faith and trust in it. And my prayer for each of you as you study this great epistle is that you will not only take it to heart, but God might so use it to impact your life that you will impact the lives of others. Who knows, but God might use you to start a reformation in your own neighborhood and community as you take heed to its message. May God bless you in your study of this great epistle.